On today's World Inside, the first virtual face-to-face -face meeting between the Chinese president and his American counterpart, a much-needed icebreaker and frosty relations, where does China-U.S. ties go from here? Here's our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. The Chinese and U.S. presidents had their first virtual meeting on Tuesday morning Beijing time. The talk is the third time the two leaders have spoken after two previous phone calls. President Xi from China has called for developing a sound and steady relationship between China and the U.S. He also said he is ready to work with President Biden to put relations back on a positive track. For his part, the American president has said both sides should seek to avoid conflict. As the world's two largest economies and permanent members of the UN Security Council, China and the U.S. need to increase communication and cooperation, each run their domestic affairs well, and at the same time, shoulder their share of international responsibilities and work together to advance the noble cause of world peace and development. And I look forward to a candid and forthright discussion like all the discussions we've had thus far. It seems to me our responsibility as leaders of China and the United States is to ensure that the competition between our countries does not veer into conflict, whether intended or unintended. And I'm joined by Daniel Russell, Vice President for International Security and Diplomacy with the Asia Society Policy Institute, and also in Shanghai, Wu Xinbo, Director of the Center for American Studies with Fudan University. Gentlemen, what a pleasure to see you. Well, the direct questions to be asked, first of all, what have been achieved in real term? Well, first of all, uh, the two presidents, uh, President Xi and President Biden, uh, had a cordial and a candid conversation face-to-face, uh, -face, virtually. So this is the first time since uh, Biden, Biden came into office. And uh, this uh, should further strengthen their personal relationship uh, built over the years. And secondly, they are trying to um, outline the framework of this relationship from their own perspective. For President Xi, he gave his hope about the, um, the uh, nature of this relationship, uh, how cooperation should play its role in this relationship, and how to deal with the uh, major problems uh, between two sides. Mm. And for President Biden, he tried to uh, reassure President Xi that the U.S. does not seek to transform China's political system. The U.S. Uh, has no intention to gang up with its allies against China and has no intention to seek conflict uh, with China. The readouts from both sides, of course, are different from one another. And that also shows the different takeaways from the meeting. So what is your take? What have been achieved? Well, Tianwei, actually, I thought that the readouts from the two sides were uh, fairly consistent in most respects, more so than, uh, frankly, I'm used to from certain past uh, meetings. So that part of it doesn't uh, really disturb me. I think I agree with Professor Xu Wu, and I think that the two leaders did a, a, a significant amount to slow down and halt the serious deterioration, the downward spiral in the bilateral relationship. Mm. There's still a long way to go, but they were able to do what uh, certainly President Biden had said he wanted to do from the outset, which was to uh, ensure that we both have in place 
uh, mechanisms to manage intense competition and at the same time find pathways to cooperate in areas where it's in both of our interests to do so. So mm -hmm. I think there are some gains uh, on risk reduction. There are some gains in opening the door to constructive uh, diplomacy and collaboration, but there's still a very long path ahead of us. Mm. Talking about very long path ahead of us, that seems to be quite a daunting task. So why don't we focus at least on something concrete? Well, one of the things concrete is about journalists, right? Both sides would be able to provide reciprocal treatment to journalists coming from both countries into each other. Um, how much can we expect this kind of uh, new policy to warm up uh, the atmosphere at least? And secondly, there has been a lot of disconnect of information from both sides about each other. And therefore, will these journalists with access better uh, be able to do a better job in communicating? These are uh, practical, incremental steps back to a sensible uh, relationship between two uh, very powerful countries. But we're two countries who have uh, serious disagreements. We have serious differences in our operating uh, style and system. So uh, journalism uh, with Chinese characteristics is quite different than journalism with American characteristics. Mm -hmm. Of course, China also believes that some of the journalistic pieces are being done about China in, from some of the U.S. media is not fair and rather off balance, though there are accusations from the other side also. Uh, so how do you see this measure? Well, I think that is not um, so much about the quality of the uh, journalist coverage of mm -hmm. the other country, but rather about attitude um, towards other society in general, mm. whether you would like to provide the openness to the other society, whether you would like to provide access to journalists from another country. So it reflects a general attitude uh, towards another society. And this also relates to a broad issue of people-to-people -people exchanges between our two countries. The other thing that I want to ask both of you is about the topics that both sides have been suggesting, also in their readouts, for cooperation. Climate change, health issues. Now, climate change, understandably, because there was an earlier joint statement coming from both sides at the uh, COP26 Glasgow meeting. However, on health issue, particularly about the pandemic, there were earlier differences about, uh, you know, issues of origin and issues of handling with the uh, uh, different uh, aspects of it. So now it seems that it is in the common ground. How would you interpret that, Mr. Russell? Well, I think there are different categories uh, where uh, the presidents uh, discussed uh, cooperation and ways that we can work together. Uh, one category clearly are the global issues where both China and the United States uh, each have a stake and an interest in uh, coordinated action. And so definitely uh, climate falls into that category, global health security but other things too, like non-proliferation uh, and uh, counter narcotics. There are many other um, issues like hot spots around the world where we need to confer. Um, but again, we're not uh, making a complete turnabout in the relationship. Mm. Uh, they are starting small and hopefully uh, the exchange of positions, the search for uh, possible ways forward and solutions uh, can gradually yield more benefits. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the journalists, the visa access, perhaps we'll see the reopenings of the consulates in Chengdu and in Houston and so on.
Uh, we'll see whether there's a satisfactory resolution of the phase one trade deal uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. But I don't see any evidence that either side is changing its basic policies, mm -hmm. although there can be some changes in, in tactics. Uh, so stopping the deterioration of the relationship is very important. Opening the gate to more people to people uh, exchange is very important. That's different, though, than uh, either resolving fundamental problems or uh, altering ba basic policies in a substantial way. Professor Wu, uh, to you, uh, how do you see the common ground, at least being touched on in the meeting? How much will they be uh, resilient to the possible challenges and dangers facing the two countries' relationship? Well, I think um, it depends on how uh, two leaders they view the importance of this relationship and how uh, they are committed uh, to uh, working with each other to get this relationship back to normal. Uh, I think uh, as, as we can tell from this virtual meeting between two presidents, uh, they are really uh, um, uh, trying to work together, uh, not only to deal with the common challenges like climate change, public health, but really uh, trying to bring um, this relationship back to normal. Now, we heard some key words, and the media has been played out that for what the past uh, uh, 24 hours. Uh, the Chinese president calling the U.S. president, quote unquote, old friend. Of course, uh, for many Chinese, that's a very polite way of addressing the other party whom you have known for quite a long time. Well, the U.S. side have also been talking about competition, but also emphasizing on the word of cooperation. That seems to be already quite some warming messages to many who have seen the cold relationship between the two countries over the past years. But the questions still remain, Mr. Russell. What do you make of the next step after the warming of atmosphere demonstrated by both leaders? What is likely to be the main way to do diplomacy between China and the United States? Is it going to be remain leadership, top leadership level? Or are we going to see apparatus of the two administrations in China and the U.S be able to work on different levels of dialogues and conversations on easy issues and also on the quote unquote difficult issues? I think that the leaders are going to have to remain involved. Uh, certainly there were attempts to work from the bottom up uh, as is typical in diplomacy but we learned from the very unsatisfactory meeting in Anchorage, the uh, unsatisfactory meeting in Shenzhen, that it just wasn't working. And I think the American side felt that uh, given the way the Chinese system operates, uh, it's really necessary to go straight to the top to deal with uh, the core of the party that. Uh, President Xi Jinping. And it seems like that was the right approach because the atmospherics have changed. Uh, perhaps the wolf warriors, so to speak, will go back to their dens, at least for a while, and give diplomats and officials an opportunity to explore how they can make concrete progress. But it's going to require uh, the consistent, repeated uh, engagement and leadership of the of the two presidents, I would expect them uh, to continue to meet, at least mm -hmm. uh, virtually. And I would also expect that the bilateral problem solving is going to be very focused, mm -hmm. very concrete, and limited to a handful of issues where both sides feel like they can solve some problems or make some progress. Like. Well, we've already seen uh, very small steps, but uh, honestly, Kenway, I think the absolute priority is going to be on risk reduction. Mm. 
on lowering the, the probability that there will be a misunderstanding, an accident, or an incident uh, that could lead to a real crisis. Mm. So on a number, in a number of uh, areas, uh, including the military to military uh, channels, mm. I think that there will be a priority effort to try to reestablish basic lines of communication. Right. And then more broadly, a search uh, in hotspot types of areas, as well as some of the, the transnational issues you mentioned, to figure out how we can avoid working at cross purposes, how we can avoid undercutting the other side's interests. Professor Wu, both sides seem to suggest top level leadership interaction crucial in the next step of a relationship between China and the United States. But to you, how do you see the possibility that appropriate and effective communication being established in the apparatuses of the two administrations so that the leadership's intentions and goals will be really implemented daily? Well, as one thing uh, goes, uh, talk the talk and walk the walk. Now we have the talk, so the problem is how to work um, this out. I think it's up to the um, two teams, uh, diplomatic team, uh, 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 economic team, and other team from both sides, the, the, how they will follow up after the meeting, and specifically how to promote cooperation in areas of common interest, as two presidents already touched on. Another area is how to um, make sure that the differences and uh, disagreements will not spill over into a uh, conflict. So I think at the moment, um, for cooperation, in addition to climate change and public health, they need to work on how to renormalize economic and trade relations between our two sides how to improve people-to-people -people exchanges mm. uh, between two societies. And on the issue of uh, damage control, uh, I think that the real uh, key issue is the Taiwan issue. Uh, President Xi spent a lot of time talking about the Taiwan issue. That is really a uh, core and explosive issue in this relationship. I think the two teams need to work out some kind of parameter of managing the differences on the Taiwan issue. And this is the call uh, uh, from the Chinese side to test whether the U.S. has the strategic intention mm. to work with China uh, uh, to avoid conflict. So it seems that we are still in a testing the other side uh, with actions uh, period. Now, as we are talking about this, uh, calendars are moving very fast. Next year will be political year. And Mr. Russell, for the U.S. and for China. How much do you think this meeting will lay the foundation of clarifying for both constituencies about where this relationship is in terms of the overall huge agenda both leaders have to deal with on their political agenda uh, in their own countries? The Bilateral meeting between the presidents has less of an effect on the politics, and the politics has more of an effect on the bilateral meeting. In other words, uh, both leaders are looking ahead and likely are thinking that it is uh, not uh, conducive to the kind of domestic stability uh, needed to navigate through a complicated uh, year to be at each other's throats. Um, certainly, I know the Winter Olympics are approaching uh, in China and how the world views China is going to matter to Chinese nation and to the Chinese people. Uh, after that, you've got the National People's Congress. And uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if the Chinese president saw value in a more stable external relation uh, uh, situation. And for President Biden, uh, I think that he came into office 
uh, declaring that his first mission was to try to restore the U.S. economy, to deal with the COVID crisis, to bring back the partnerships and alliances. And I think he feels that, by and large, he's done what he set out to do. And now is the time to engage directly, candidly, but also constructively with President uh, Xi Jinping and uh, work on the relationship with China. Now, the politics in the United States are quite different. Uh, he has to be very careful not to uh, expose himself to attacks from hardline elements who <clears throat> would like to argue that uh, he's being tricked by China, mm. uh, that he's being drawn into pointless dialogues that aren't going to generate any benefits and, and solutions. That's perhaps part of the reason that he's so focused on uh, results uh, and focused uh, work by staff to uh, really and really achieve something uh, tangible. Well, I think uh, domestic politics um, work in different ways when it comes to uh, foreign policy. On the one hand, when China enters a major political season, we may need a stable international environment so that leaders will not be uh, defected. They, they will focus more on domestic issues. But on the other hand, if there is growing political pressure from the outside, from the, um, the challenge from the outside, then the political leaders have to stand formally up uh, with the pressure and the challenges to show that they are capable to defend our national interests and they deserve the support of the people. So I think it works both ways. Uh, so far as this virtual summit is concerned, basically people hope that this will further still stabilize US-China relations and help create an amicable international environment for China for the uh, forthcoming um, party congress next year. However, if you know the US continues to push China on Taiwan, on South China Sea, on Xinjiang, or even to boycott Beijing Olympics, then the public may expect the leadership to take up more uh, a, a, a formal position vis-a-vis -vis the United States. I think that is also why President, uh, uh, President Xi emphatically talked about the Taiwan issue in the meeting because he knows that the issue is uh, not only of concern to the leadership, but also uh, very much to the concern of the general public in China. Hmm. It's really interesting to see the evolution of ideas and thoughts and debates in both countries about the nature of relationship between China and the United States over the past few years. Now, on that, seem dust have already settled down in both countries. The nature of it, there are at least a group of adjectives to describe. But how to interpret all these adjectives in each uh, of the two countries' discussions within itself, it's a very interesting one. On that, I want to ask the final question. Now, uh, Mr. Russell, how to make sure from the U.S. perspective, that its goal in terms of China-U.S. relations will be implemented, but at the same time, damage will really be controlled and it will be precise about the goals being implemented. How do you see this uh, going on in your country? Well, that's a tough question, Fenway, but it's a combination of, uh, of credibility and of uh, communications. So I think that as long as there are people in important decision-making positions in Beijing who are convinced that the United States is in terminal decline, that uh, the correlation of forces is such that China's rise is inevitable, America and the West decline is also inevitable, then there's a high risk of uh, miscalculation and of friction or worse. 
but that if the United States uh, can demonstrate that its staying power, uh, its, its national capabilities, its economic uh, innovative uh, qualities, its technology and so on, uh, continue to grow. And that the competition between Washington and Beijing, uh, the United States and China, is the kind of competition that's going to make both of us better, both of us stronger. Uh, then I think that there is less like likelihood of a of a dangerous and a major miscalculation. Mm -hmm. But the second piece of it is communication, and communication is not just broadcasting; it's not arguing. Mm -hmm. It is listening and it is persuading and explaining. So the importance of this virtual summit, in my opinion, is that. In the Chinese system, it sent a message saying uh, it's okay to communicate. It's uh, authorized to explore avenues of, comp of cooperation, even compromise. In the U.S. system also, I think it sends a constructive message. Don't demonize China as the enemy. Uh, if you have problems with Chinese behavior, then let's address those in a straightforward, constructive, and candid way. Mm. I think from a Chinese perspective, the U.S. policy is first and foremost uh, constrained by its domestic politics. When President Biden, every time he wanted to promote his domestic agenda, he has to refer to China. So that really um, strengthened the, uh, uh, China's image as a uh, competitor rivalry and even enemy among the American public. That makes the Chinese side feel very upset. And also as the political season approaches, the midterm election, I think many politicians, senators and congressmen, they will show um, toughness on China to get the political support. So that sent a very discouraging message to the Chinese side about the um, U.S. domestic politics. And also, frankly, I think the Biden's uh, team is divided over the China policy uh, on economic issues, diplomatic issues, and security issues. So even if President Biden has the intention and will to improve this relationship and to seek more cooperation, but the U.S. domestic politics and also his uh, national security team uh, will constrain his ability to do so. So I think this is uh, really uh, a, a, a big uh, challenge for the Biden administration after the summit meeting. I see. We hope we're going to see more interactions between the top leaders and also different levels of the society between the two countries. After all, it's been decades of efforts devoted by many generations between China and the United States to make where our relationship was uh, a few years ago. Thank you so much for both of you. I know you've been working hard on that. Daniel Russell, Wu Xinbo, appreciate it. And that's a discussion on China-U.S. relations. That's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more Search for World Insight, check out our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching. 